Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P E P Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents The Adventures of Superman. Superman's very existence hangs in a perilous balance. The whole planet of Apollo draws nearer the sun and complete destruction. Hello there, gang. This is your pal Dan McCullough. Say, it's hurry, hurry, hurry. Send in today for your Superman Crusader ring because time's growing short and you wouldn't want to be the only one in your crowd without one of these slick-looking rings. You see, this ring identifies you as a Superman crusader. Sure, makes you a part of Superman's crusade for good Americans. And is it a slick-looking ring made of sturdy silver-looking metal with a shiny, durable finish that'll, that it keeps right on looking shiny and slick come rain or shine? Why, it'll wear and wear. And Superman's picture stands out big and powerful on the front, and the words Superman crusader are printed clear and plain on the side. And the ring's adjustable, so it's easy to fit right on your finger yourself. Now... Here's how to get your own Superman Crusader ring. Ask Mom to get you a package of that sunshine cereal, Kellogg's Pep. Tear off the box top and send it along with 10 cents in cash and your name and address clearly printed to Superman, Box 40, that's 4-0, Battle Creek, Michigan. You got that now? Send one Kellogg's Pep box top, 10 cents in cash, and your name and address clearly printed to Superman, Box 40, that's 4-0, Battle Creek, Michigan. Sent in today for your Superman Crusader ring from P.E.P., the sunshine cereal, Kellogg's Pep. And now, the adventures of Superman. On the strange planet Apollo, where he came to warn the inhabitants they were about to be carried into the sun and destroyed, Superman is now in deadly peril. Something in the planet's atmosphere robbed him of all his great strength, and it was only when a certain oil was burned near him that he could retain consciousness. The Ra's cruel ruler of Apollo scoffed when Superman warned him that Apollo was in danger of destruction and condemned him to a dark cell with an elderly scientist named Thane. Too weak to resist and deprived of the oil fire essential to his breathing, Superman lost consciousness. And Thane had given up hope when his young daughter Lalo, accompanied by a giant slave, entered the cell through a hole the powerful giant had made in the floor. Then carrying the unconscious Superman, the giant wearing a mental telepathy helmet such as that worn by the others, led Thane and Lalo into an underground stairway beneath the Raz's temple. And as we continue now, they are proceeding cautiously in single file down the winding narrow clay stairs to almost pitch darkness. Listen. Be careful, Father. Steps are wet and slippery. I will be careful, Lalo. Tell me, this giant, what is he called? His name is Ud. How can you be certain he is to be trusted? He is the personal slave of the princess. And she swears she would trust him with her own life. Oh, and he leads us now to her quarters. Aye, the princess has many jars of the sacred oil hidden there. Uh-huh. They will be set it afire so that we may restore Superman's strength. The princess, unlike her tyrant uncle Daraz, has both wisdom and a noble heart. Now, if only we are not too late to revive Superman. Too late? You think perhaps he... Uh, one moment. Does Superman still breathe his word? Aye. Most weakly, sire. Oh. Lead us quickly to the princess before Superman expires. Hurry. Aye, but have care, sire. The Lois is a sacred oil spring guarded by the fiercest of the Raz's giants. Should they discover us, we will die quickly. We will be careful. Come, Father. Aye, lead on, Ord. Come, then. Here. We approach now a junction of two staircases. One of which goes down to the sacred spring... The other upwards to the quarters within the temple. Follow me closely. We follow, Ord. Hold firmly to my hand, Father. Aye, Lalo. Hold. The junction is here. Turn to your right hand and ascend. Come. To the right, Father. Aye. If only we could see. Have patience. I think it is not far now to the quarters of the princess. To me, Father... You spoke of a plan whereby you and he might still save all of us from being consumed by the sun. Aye, 
What I hope I do. Move no further. What is it, George? Someone come, sire. Listen. You hear? I hear voices. Aye. Perhaps the voices of the giant guards at the sacred spring. Nay, sire. These voices come from above. Why, oh, they do come from above. I count two, three voices of men who come from the temple and descend on these very stairs. These stairs on which we stand? Aye. There are no others from the temple. These men must go to the sacred spring for oil. Quickly, turn about and go back. Go back where? Back to the cell. Turn to your left hand. Quickly, sire. And you, mistress, we must hurry or we are discovered and lost. I go to the wall, father. It's my hand. I do so, Lalo. Uh. Now, turn now to your left hand. Oh, oh, this is indeed unfortunate. With Superman already so near death. Save your breath, father. And move quickly. They are gone. Wait. I hear someone up ahead. Oh, oh. Listen. Aye. Both Fane and the stranger have escaped. The guards at your cell, sir. Aye. A great hole in the floor. Ah, they have discovered your escape. Who oh, is that? More and worse misfortune. They escaped by the underground stairway. Come. After them. Aye, after them. They come after us. What should we do? Uh, what can we do? They come both from this staircase and from the temple. We are trapped. There's but one chance. We must descend by the stairs to the sacred spring. Follow me. We cannot go to the spring. You said yourself that Roz's fiercest giants guard it. We are lost. Hurry, please. There's a trail circling the pool of the sacred spring, which leads out into the hills. If we are fortunate, we may escape thus without being seen. Hurry. We must attempt it. I lead on, Lord. Uh, come swiftly. But be careful not to stumble. Oh, Stuart. He with us. They cannot be long gone. Quickly. Rain and the stranger must not escape us. The Ross will demand our lives. I'm for you escape us. Faster, Father. I, I, Lalo, I go as fast as I can. Take care. The stairs make another turn to the right hand. Dear Lord. Oh, evil misfortune. Some of you go above on the stairway of the temple. Right, the others come down with me to the sacred spring. Uh, almost can I feel the devil's breath upon my neck. I fear our end has come, Lalo. You must yet give up hope, Father. Uh, uh, oh. Hold what is it? Why do you stop over? They are close behind us. Just ahead. And below is the pool formed by the sacred spring. I, I see it. Mm. And the lanterns of the giant guards around it. They are all around the pool. They will see us if we go further. Uh, they are not at this far end of the pool, sire. Where the dark moss trees stand. The trail, a narrow one, is between the trees and out to the hills. Descend behind me now. But with the utmost caution. I would. We stay with you. Lead on. Come then. But make not a sound. Here is the junction. You four go above to the temple. You others come below with me. All right. We go. Wood. The guard just sent me the same stairs behind us. Oh, whoa. All is lost. Make not a sound. Wood. I am afraid. Be not afraid. See? The trail is just ahead. We have not yet been seen. In another I moment. See that. You below, guards of the sacred spring. After the escaping prisoners of the Lord. And see now we are lost. We are discovered. Still carrying the unconscious Superman, the giant Ord leaps down the remaining narrow stairs rushes toward the mossy trees lining the far end of the black pool, followed by Lalo and the elderly Thane, as mammoth hairy giant guards run to head them off. We'll learn what happens now when we return in a moment for the startling climax of today's episode. So stand by. Deep underground beneath the Temple of the Roz, where the spring of sacred oil empties into a deep black pool lined by stunted mossy trees. Thane, his daughter Lalo, and the giant Horde, who carries the unconscious Superman across his shoulder, have been discovered by fierce giant slave soldiers of the Roz, who guard the sacred spring and pool. The weird half-light cast by the crescent-shaped lanterns of the guards throws huge shadows on the smooth clay wall as the giants swarm on Horde, Thane, and Lalo. Lalo! Lalo! Who 
overwhelmed by the many powerful giants, Ford, Zane, and Lalo are herded back to the steps to be taken to the Roz. During the fight, Superman has fallen to the ground, where, partly revived by the burning oil and the lanterns about him, he has pulled himself dazedly to one knee. Now, as two of the huge giants each reach down a hand to drag him to the stairs, the Man of Steel makes a supreme effort, and taking them totally by surprise, seizes a lantern from a giant and deliberately hurls it into the pool of sacred oil. At once, a gigantic sea of fire rises over the pool. Black waves of smoke billow through a vast cavern below the temple. Now, you devils! I strike will come back and get the lake of fire! Let's go of me! Go! Go! Be with him! Father! Into the, pool. the fiend! He will be consumed by the flames! Now all is truly lost! Their eyes wide with horror, Lalo and Sane see Superman struck by a huge giant, fall backward into the flaming pool of oil, and slowly sink out of sight beneath the blazing surface. Then, without a backward glance, Giants swiftly rush the girl and scientist up the smoke-filled stairs. One moment more in the flaming pool of oil, affecting a change in the atmosphere, would have restored Superman's strength. But now, as he sinks far below the surface, what can save him? And what can save Thane and Lalo and all the others of the doomed planet Apollo? More thrilling things happen tomorrow, so be sure to be with us then. Same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. As you remember, the atmosphere on the planet Apollo, where he had come on an errand of mercy, caused Superman to lose all his strength. And with an elderly scientist named Thane, he was imprisoned by the Raz, the tyrannical ruler of the planet. Reviving momentarily, Superman seized a lighted torch and threw it into a lake of sacred oil, having discovered that the gas created by the burning oil somehow restored his strength. But as a great sheet of flame arose, the infuriated giants hurled Superman into the blazing lake. As we continue now, a great crowd is collected in the Valley of Flowers, watching in awe as the mountainous flames leap skyward, consuming the Raza's temple, and billows of black smoke darken the clouds. Curiously, the big nose bronze faces Thane and Lalo, who have been captured by his giant guard. Listen. It is you, Thane, and your daughter Lalo who are responsible for this. You who have destroyed both my temple and the spring of sacred oil. Oh, you universal one. We meant only good. Aye, it was our hope to revive Superman, and with his help to save all on this planet. You hear, all right? Thane admits conspiring with the evil spirit. He who calls himself Superman. He is not an evil spirit. He comes from the planet Earth to help us to save ourselves from destruction when our planet leaves its orbit and is carried into the sun. Aye, but now Superman is gone. That means an end to us all. Fools, think you still to trick me with this talk of our star being carried into the sun? Gods, take Cain and his daughter Lalo and this slave on the ground and cast them into the fires of my temple. No! Wait! Do what you will with me, but spare Lalo and the poor slave. Farewell, traitors. And a happy journey to the star of the dead. <laughs> Stop. Put Thane and Lalo down. And Or too. Who is this strange creature who drips with oil? I know not, Oraz. He dropped from the sky. Put them down, I said. No. The Raz has ordered them. All right. Ah. Remember, you asked for this. Father, who is this? Thank you, stars. Uh, it's Superman. Behold, Summer. The stranger oh, knocks down our giants as if they were straws. Aye, he must be another evil spirit. Quick, Thane. Lalo, up with you. See, Oraz, the evil spirit. Stop him! Stop him! Up with Ord now. There we are. Now, up and away! We must be. We seem to fly. We must already be spirits, Father. Oh, you're very much alive, Lalo. I cannot understand, Superman. I thought you perished in the lake of blazing oil. On the contrary, the fire revived me and apparently just in time. I, I thought Lalo and I had breathed our last. Tell me, have all men on your earth this amazing power of flight? No, but there's no time to go into that now, Payne. No telling how long my strength will last. Before your atmosphere weakens me again, there are things to do. First, I need a sample of your atmosphere to take with me to Earth. To Earth? Yes. 
Got to get back there at once and let our scientists try to build me some defense against your atmosphere. Then I'll come back. You, Thane, you said you had a laboratory. I? You have a pressure-proof container, perhaps this metal your mental telepathy helmets are made of, in which I can take back some of your atmosphere? I, I have, in my laboratory. Where is that? Below there, in the woods. It was necessary to hide it from the Ra's and his jealous astrologers. Those woods down there? I? Down! <laughs> His eyes are still closed. Don't worry about him, Lalo. Got a bad knock on the head, but he'll come around. Now, that atmosphere sample, Thane. It is here, Superman, in this metal ball. Good. Listen to this, Superman. My instruments register a temperature far higher than any known here. And these on which I have attempted to gauge the action of our planet in its orbit perform strangely. I am unable to understand it. You're probably being drawn closer to the sun every moment. There isn't a second of waste. Now, tell me. Where can I take you so you'll be safe from the Ra's until I return? Do you not take us with you to your Earth? I wish I could, Lalo. But since I can hardly breathe on your planet, the chances are you and your father couldn't breathe at all on Earth. Aye, uh, that sounds reasonable. Tell me quickly, what safe place on this planet can I take you to? Why, uh, uh, let me consider... Hurry, Thane, hurry. Why not the village of our cousin's father? Aye, Lalo, that is good. They will hide us there until Superman returns. Hurry, then. Come outside and we'll get started. Where is this village of your cousin? Beyond the distant mountains there, where lie the lake of silver mercury. Mercury? Aye. It was there I fashioned many of my instruments. I see. All right. Up with the word first. There we are. Are you, Lalo? Oh, you're as strong as an out giant stranger. If only my strength holds out till I get back to Earth. Up with you now, Thane. Come on. <coughs> All right. Hold on now. Up! Up! And away! <laughs> the sea of mercury below, and the village of our cousins lies just beyond on the side of the Black Mountain. I see it. I'll drop you on that ridge just above the village. Down! <laughs> All right, here we are. What are those queer shrill sounds? Oh, those are the tika. The what? A tika creature is half bird, half fish, Superman. It lives both in the sea of mercury and in the silver leaf trees you see there. What a paradise this would be for our naturalists. Are these creatures harmful? No. They're as harmless as house pets. Good. I can leave you then. I... I... What is it, stranger? I don't know. The heat or the atmosphere is beginning to weaken me. I... I better get started while I can. Goodbye to both of you, and unless something happens to me, I'll be back very soon. May the great being protect you, my son, and carry you safely. Thank you, Thane. Goodbye, Lalo. Farewell, noble stranger. Good luck to you both. Up! And away! <laughs> High in the air above Apollo, Superman pauses for a moment to wave to Thane and Lalo, two tiny figures on a mountain ridge above the Sea of Mercury. Then he turns and streaks away and presses onward with the speed of light into the terrors of space itself, bound homeward for Earth. We'll return in a moment for the tense climax of today's episode, so stand by. Homeward bound from Apollo, Superman has passed beyond the orbit of the planet, beyond its last vestige of atmosphere is now streaking through the awesome cavernous reaches of space itself. Its amazingly keen eyes are fixed on the tiny green-tinted sphere of Earth, where it rotates on its axis between the white star of Venus and the lurid reddish glow of Mars. Eagerly, fully realizing the importance of his mission, Superman calls on his powerful muscles for their final ounce of speed, forgetting for a tiny moment that he is streaking across the path of the sun. Suddenly, he flashes through a vast prismatic shaft of half-light feels himself immediately stricken as with a billion sharp hammer blows. Oh. His body becomes numb oh. and his flight is slowed. Oh. What happened? I, I'm stopping, but I must go on. Oy! Oh. I can't. My strength leaving me again. Wait. Great Scott, not that way. I'm being drawn. Hard the sun! No! No! Frantically, feeling his strength leaving him, seeing himself drawn toward the great merciless white ball of heat which is the sun, Superman fights as he has never fought before, fights for his very life, 
knowing that if he is drawn into the violent, immeasurable x-rays of the sun, even he must be destroyed. I... I must get away. I must. Pain. Lalo, all on the planet Apollo will be doomed unless I can save them. I must get back to work. I... I must... Grimly, desperately, Superman fights on. Fights against the immense power of the sun for his life and for the lives of the helpless human beings on Apollo, whose only hope lies with him. Who will conquer, Superman or the vast, unmeasured powers in space? Don't miss Monday's thrilling and surprising episode, fellows and girls. Be sure to tune in again on Monday. Same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Today, gang, we'd like to salute that swell organization, the Campfire Girls, in its 34th year. Regardless of race, color, or creed, the Campfire Girls offer a program of planned leisure time to girls from 7 to 18. And now, during their current membership march, there's a chance for every girl to join this group, which means fun and friendship to so many. So, to join up, you get in touch with the nearest office of the Campfire Girls. <laughs> As you remember, the burning of a lake of oil on the planet Apollo affected a change in the atmosphere and restored Superman's strength. Rescuing Thane, an elderly scientist, and his daughter Lalo from death at the hands of the Raz, tyrannical ruler of Apollo, Superman took them to the safety of a distant village. Then, promising he would return as soon as possible to the doomed planet, the Man of Steel started back to Earth. But while speaking through space, he passed into the direct suns of the ray, where, numbed by the terrible rays, he felt himself being drawn as if by a giant magnet into the very sun itself. And as we continue now in the vast, empty reaches of space, Superman fights for his life against the mightiest force in the universe. Listen. Ah. If I'm drawn much closer to the sun, I'll be finished. I, I must get through, but, but my strength is going. Got to get back to Earth. I know... How to save people on Apollo. Away! Ah, there. Made a little headway that time. I can't stand this much longer. Ah, once more. Away from this terrible rain. Away! There. I gained a little more. Away! Desperately, with every ounce of strength and will in his powerful body, Superman fights as he has never fought before against the merciless rays of the sun, which make even man's newly discovered atomic power seem puny. Battling for each yard of progress, he continues a little more. Then he girds himself for a final effort in this titanic struggle for his existence. <laughs> Hours later, an editor Perry White's office in the Metropolis Daily Planet. The gray-haired editor and cub reporter Jimmy Olsen, both swallowing hard to control their emotions, regard the galley proof of page one for the next edition, on which, across three columns bordered in a heavy black margin, is a photograph of Clark Kent, whose identity as Superman is unknown to his friends. A great reporter who gave his life to aid humanity. That's a swell caption, Mr. White. Oh, Thanks. I wrote it myself. I wrote the story about Kent, too. Did you read it, Jim? Uh-huh. Gee, Mr. Kent gone. I can't realize I'll never see him again. Yeah, it's hard to get used to that. And Superman. We'll never see him again, either. Or have him to help us out of jam. That's a terrible blow, Jim. Are, are you sure there's no hope for them? Of course. And so is Dr. Millicent. They've been gone for ten days now, and Superman said if he and Kent weren't back within three days, we'd know they'd been lost. I know, but why do they have to take Mr. Kent along? He isn't a, a Superman. Well, I guess Kent saw a chance to get the biggest story of the age and to learn things which would be of great value to us on Earth, so he insisted on going along. Uh, he was a great reporter. Yeah, and a great guy. Gosh, Chief, I, 
I... Now, 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 Jim, don't blubber. Kent wouldn't want you to. Uh, I'm not. I don't but like I... Jim. Come quick, hurry up. Huh? Well, what's the matter with you, Beanie? Creepers, don't stop to ask questions. Come on. Come hurry. where? What happened, Beanie? Where do Beanie? you see? Oh, golly, come on. It, it... Come on to Mr. Kent's office. Well, huh? What's in Kent's office? Where do you see? Come on, hurry. <laughs> Look, Mr. White, at the typewriter. Good you God. You see? It, it, it's a ghost. Go, ghost, my eye. Kent, Mr. now what Kent. in the name of... Oh, Kent, say, that's done. Now, if I don't get back from the next trip, the whole story of Apollo is right here, Chief. Oh, gosh, Mr. Kent, I'm so glad to see you. I don't know what to do. Thanks, Jim. I'm glad to see you, too. No, 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 never mind that. Now, now, you start talking, Kent, before I blow my top. I'm sorry, Chief, but I'm not up to talking right now. You're not up to it. But I'm but... worried, and I'm more tired than I ever was in my life. The sun almost finished me. The sun? Yes, the direct rays of the sun in space. I fought for hours as I never fought before. Yeah, what more? You, you are... fought against the sun. In space? Oh, what are you talking about? Uh, he's I confused, Chief. Uh, uh, yes, yes, that, that, that's right, Jim. I, I mean, Superman did. Well, where is he, Superman now? Oh, he, he's around. Around where? I don't see him. Don't be silly, Bill. Well, he's, uh, he's waiting for the same thing I am, a call from Dr. Millicent. He said he'd call the moment he finished analyzing the sample of atmosphere I brought back from Apollo and devised the means for me to keep my strength up there. Keep huh? your strength? I want to go back to the planet at once. If I don't come back this time... Well, I've written the whole story of Apollo for you and for everyone else on Earth. But but why do you have to go back to Apollo? Jim, there are millions of people up there. There are. And unless I find some way to act and act very quickly, they'll all perish. Every second counts. Maybe that's Millicent now. No, no, no. Wait, Kent. Hello? Clark Kent speaking. Who? Oh, yes, Dr. Millicent. What's the good word? Oh, boy, so much has happened in the last few minutes. My you head's did, huh? Going round hey, that's no, I'm going you... round and round. I'm going wacky. Oh, I see. Well, yes, of course. I'll be right over. I, I, I mean, I'll, I'll contact Superman and tell him you want to see him at once. Right, Doctor. So long. Well, here I go again. Now, wait, Kent. Where are you going, Mr. Kent? Back to the planet Apollo, I hope. Gee, Wallacher. But, Mr. Kent... No, 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 wait. You, you can't just I'm walk sorry, but I place. can't delay a moment. The story I wrote will tell you everything. Read it. So long. Kent said you were ready to see me, Dr. Millicent. Yes, Superman. I've analyzed the sample of air you brought from Apollo, and I know why you lost your strength up there. You do? Why? Because the atmosphere in Apollo consists of more than 20% krypton gas. Krypton gas? Yes. Anyone else on Earth exposed to an atmosphere with such a low oxygen and nitrogen content and so high a krypton content would die almost at once. I see. People in Apollo must have a slightly different lung structure from ours. Uh Uh-huh. Probably a different body chemistry in general. Well, then they, they couldn't exist on Earth in our atmosphere. Oh, not possibly. Uh-oh. And no one from Earth except you could have existed for so long a time on Apollo. And even I practically ceased to exist until I managed to set their lake of sacred oil on fire. That restored my strength. How do you account for that, Doctor? There's obviously some element in the oil which, when burned, added the required oxygen and nitrogen to the air which you needed. I see. Well, tell me, can you devise something for me, a, a tank or something I can carry which will serve the same purpose as the burning oil and allow me to keep my strength on Apollo? Yes, I think I can, but, well, it won't last for a great length of time, of course. It's only got to last long enough for me to save the Apollonians. But wait, Doctor. I had in mind the use of rocket ships to take the people away, but you say they won't be able to exist on Earth. No, they won't. Well, then how can I save them? I later? have another plan to save the people on Apollo and their planet as well. You have? Yes, it's just possible that you can accomplish it. What? But it'll be tremendously difficult and risky, too. Never mind how difficult and risky it is. There are human beings up there, millions of them, and two of them risk their lives for me. I'll do anything possible I can to save them. Anything. All right, Superman, here's the outline of... Oh, excuse me. Dr. Millison speaking. Who? Oh, yes, Dr. Bloomfield. Now, listen, I have news for you. Superman's here, and he agrees to... What? 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 Great heavens, where? What happened, Doctor? I see. I see, yes, I... I'll tell him. Well, this is a great shock. Goodbye. Millicent, you've turned so pale. What's happened? You... You won't have to go back to Apollo now, Superman. What do you mean? It's... It's too late. What? Too late to do anything for Apollo now. Alarmed, Superman stares at Dr. Millicent, from whose worried face all color has drained. What does the scientist mean? We'll know in a moment when we return for the startling climax of today's episode. So stand by. In his laboratory, Dr. John Millicent, world-famous scientist, 
has just startled Superman by saying... You don't have to make the fellow now, Superman. It's too late. Too late to help the unfortunate people on that doomed planet now. What do you mean, Doctor? Why? That was Dr. Bloomfield who just called. He's in the observatory at Mount Arthur. Yes? He tells me that a little over an hour ago, the planet Apollo passed completely out of view of our telescope. What? Well, just what does that mean? It means that Apollo has already left the temporary orbit in which it was revolving around its own moon and is now lost in space. Great Scott, then... Then... Somewhere in space, it's being controlled by the sun, being drawn into it to be burned and disintegrated. No. Now, not even you, Superman, can find and save the poor doomed souls on the planet Apollo. Catching his breath, Superman sees in his mind's eye his friend Thane, the young girl Lalo, and all the other helpless beings on the strange planet Apollo. As in his ears, rings the voice of Dr. Millicent repeating... Is Superman helpless to avert the catastrophe? Must he stand idly by while Thane, Lalo, and millions of other human beings on Apollo are destroyed? You can be sure Superman will not stand idly by, even though he must risk his life again in an even more hopeless cause. Tomorrow we'll see what he does, and we'll find out just what is happening on the planet Apollo. So be sure to be with us then. Same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is the copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Say, when you think of toasty words like crisp, crunchy, crinkly, you just naturally go right on to crumbles. Kellogg's crumbles, so toasty and sweet and mellow rich on a frosty morning. What a dish for breakfast. The only cereal in the whole wide world made in those little crinkly shreds of good whole wheat. And uh, you know about whole wheat, don't you? You know it's good for you. So get your wholesome whole wheat in crisp, crunchy, crinkly, crumbles, Kellogg's crumbles. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>